do not under any circumstances buy this chart just don't do it just just stay away just tell me you'll stay away and we'll talk about why what's going on everybody it's your boy crypto bobby i hope you're having a great day great night wherever you are watching or listening in from and yep today let's talk about what we're seeing on the screen here and that is the recent performance since exchange listing of some of the top binance ieos or initial exchange offerings and i want to talk about why buying ieos once they hit the market is not a very great idea at this point in time and is hopefully something that you will stay away from and by staying away from it you might save yourself a few pennies a few bucks and help yourself out in the long run so this video this topic was inspired by alex kruger it's at kruger macro on twitter i'll put a link below in the youtube description and alex tweeted out these are all of the binance ieos since the token started trading publicly can you spot a pattern it was actually all the ones going back to 2017 i believe with the first two ieos being bread brd and gifto you could see a pretty clear down pattern especially in the for 2019 binance ieos where alex also says the four 2019 ios have been crashing since tokens started trading publicly and that in a quote unquote bull market where almost everything else pumped why would that be again i'll put a link to this uh twitter below so you can check that out and if you are new to the, this channel by any chance make sure to hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button so why are the majority of these ios having very high peaks right off the bat and then slowly selling off after a very high initial listing peak well one of the big things is the oversubscribed nature of the initial offerings they do a very small portion of the actual token supply drum up a ton of interest and only a certain amount of people can actually get in on that token and then once it's listed there is this big run up around the excitement but the problem with that is if there is a big run up around the excitement, a lot of these tokens have been listing at not like a 10% premium, not like a 50% premium, like 100, 200, 300, 400. In the, in the case of BitTorrent, a multiple, multiple premium there that investors had right away. So when you're looking at what was happening in the you know greater cryptocurrency market, finding a one to a six X right now is pretty damn hard to do very very impressive to get and obviously investors in the crypto markets are, are thirsty for returns like that to get a one to six x so if an ieo does that out of the gate what do you think is going to happen with all the investors in the ieo do you think they're really long-term you know true believers in BitTorrent or in seller or in fetch or in whatever other you know ieo is happening right now no they're probably not they are happy that they had fast fingers that could get through the captcha of the IEO or that they, you know, participated in it somehow or another. And they're happy to take their, you know, instant 100 plus percent gains and go home with their profits. Now, the problem with that, though, is that there are so many investors that are looking to take those profits and not as many actual buyers and demand for these tokens nobody really wants to use these tokens there is no actual demand for the products behind these tokens it was solely a quick speculative flip and then it costs a it creates a cascading effect on the sellers because everybody is just trying to sell at the you know basically get rid of the token as quick as they can with the price as high as they can and it essentially pushes down the price pushes down the price pushes down the price where does this fit in for you well one of the big things in my mind is i have no interest at least right now in purchasing a token that i owed on any of these exchanges at a significant premium to what it what the offering was at so you know whether it's BitTorrent, not a big tron guy but a lot of you guys know that about me <laughs> whether it's BitTorrent or matic or seller or fetch these are all still trading above where they i owed at without i would say incredibly high demand and i have no interest in buying somebody else's bag at a massive premium and paying for them to exit a profitable position at this point now that's not to say that these will never be solid moves in the future if we see a bull market again if we see a you know larger cryptocurrency market do i think BitTorrent will likely pump to the moon because of the 
Now, the marketing of Justin Sun and all the things associated with it, yeah, I think that's probably a, a logical conclusion and something that, you know, realistically will probably happen. However, am I going to buy that bag right now for the IEO participants? Absolutely not. And I think that when you look at every single one of these charts, it's really a straight run to the bottom as people continually take profits, continually take profits from the initial offering uh, and offload that to somebody else who might be trying to speculate on it. But the trend is is not in your favor at this point in time as a buyer of the kind of secondary exchange of an IEO. Now, if you can buy an initial offering, if you can actually get into the IEO itself on Binance specifically, on the other exchanges, I don't know, but on Binance specifically, you're probably gonna make money and you're probably gonna be in for a nice quick short flip. Go for it, that's fine. But for me, hopefully helping you out, I think that the, the smart thing at this point in time with the distribution model and how these IEOs are moving, it's to stay away from the initial exchange offering tokens once they do hit an exchange because there has been a clear downtrend basically across the board for all the tokens minus the first few days with BitTorrent. And I think that's somewhat of an outlier due to just the crazy marketing ability of Justin Sun that you really can't put, put numbers on at this point in time. Now, if I never had to say the word tether again, I'd be a pretty happy man. I would be, I'd be pretty joyous, actually. I, no, I, I'm somewhat slightly tired of, of talking about tether, but nonetheless, it's something that we need to talk about and it's something that needs to be said. And some more information came out about tether today that kind of came about with the affidavit from the general counsel or the legal counsel for both Bitfinex and tether, previously both Bitfinex and tether. And the information within the affidavit from the legal counsel pointed to the fact that the USDT stablecoin is actually only backed by about 74% fiat equivalents. The other are in uh, short-term securities, or in this case, mostly iFinex shares or shares of Bitfinex, basically equity in Bitfinex uh, and a, a loan. So... This, I think, provided a little bit of clarity to what we're at right now or where we're at with this Tether and Bitfinex situation. I do not think it is a, I don't think it's a great thing to see. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's good to, you know, to see this and to look at it. The market didn't really move at all on the news. I think perhaps it was you know, something that either confirmed the suspicions of the, the majority of traders out there or just something that didn't really play into the effect of it. But what I would want to say is I do think that there's a little bit of like hypocrisy right now on Twitter where we're comparing what's happening with the fact that Tether only has, you know, 74 cents on the dollar, the rest that other 26 cents or so you know, might be an equity or other types of you know, basically other types of, of cash um, at this point in time. So if there was a kind of quote unquote full on bank run, for Tether, if everybody tried to redeem every Tether for a dollar, that would not be possible at this point. And so this is a tweet from Bitcoin Birch, and I love Birch. Um, I will respectfully disagree with this tweet. I'll read it out loud. So Bitcoin uh, Birch says, Birch says, uh, fear-inducing headline, only 74% of Tether is backed by cash and equivalents. The truth, your bank would collapse if everyone tried to withdraw. They have nowhere near 74% liquidity. Calm down, people. Buy Bitcoin. Um and I'll, I'll I'll disagree with a, a portion of this, the the aspect of of calm down by Bitcoin. Ultimately, in the long run, I think this tether stuff is a it's a a speed bump that will be looked back in history as something that you know, was an issue, but ultimately does not affect the underlying kind of components of Bitcoin. It doesn't affect the technology. It doesn't affect what a lot of people are trying to build. However, the tether stuff is still part of the ecosystem. And unfortunately, a very large part of the ecosystem due to how heavily Tether is utilized by a majority of cryptocurrency exchanges out there. The part of this tweet that I disagree with is the comparison to uh, other banks. And a lot of people have been making this comparison where it's like, you know what? Tether only has 74%. Uh, is Tether is only backed 74% by cash and equivalents. And banks are only required. Actually, Bitcoin or Bitfinex is... Legal counsel referenced the fact that banks only need to have about, I believe, 10% cash on hand. So the fact that, you know, Bitfinex has 74% and banks have 10%, hey, it's no problem. 
So that that would be fine if the tether itself was not supposed to be one for one redeemable for crypto, you know, for a dollar. And that wasn't the sales pitch of Tether forever. And I also think that, you know, if we are as a as an industry, I think very much in the industry, people are are anti-bank and they're trying to recreate this financial system. You know, Bitcoin itself was born out of the ashes of the financial crisis. You know, Chancellor on the brink, um, all that, all that good stuff. Bitcoin was born in the back of the financial crisis. A lot of people are into Bitcoin due to the you know, issues that they have with banks, the issues that they have with central banks. And we're trying to recreate things in a way that you know, maybe is more fair and uh, just in the eyes of, of a lot of other people. Now, we're trying to recreate the financial system and then we can't go back and say, oh, well, you know, Tether does this, but the financial system is actually worse. I think we should be you know, actually holding to our own standard and setting our own standard rather than looking back on the issues that the banking industry has and then saying, well, you know, the banking industry d does this. So it's okay if, you know, we're not as transparent and you know, we, we're actually, you know, don't have one for one fiat reserves and cash equivalents or anything like that. I think that is, is somewhat hypocritical of, and this isn't just Birch at all. Um, but I wanted to use like that, just the, the, the greater line of thinking as an example, because I think that's the wrong way to think as an industry, you know, whereas we're trying to kind of move society forward, get out of the entrenched financial system uh, and the entrenched narrative of banks and move towards something that is a better way of doing things. And if we, you know, have something like Tether that is kind of rescinding to a way in which we're trying to move away from, I don't think we should either celebrate that or justify it because that's what banks do. So, hey, Tether can do that too. I know. I think we should look at that and say, you know, that's actually not a good thing that Tether is moving away from what was initially promised into something that is more comparable with the traditional financial system. But that's my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Like, what do you think about the 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 fractional reserve-ish? It's not full on, it's not full on fractional reserve banking, but what do you think about the, the new issues that came out with Tether today. Do you agree with Birch? Do you think that, you know, this is just overblown and, hey, you know, if banks do this, then then we're fine too. And you know, ultimately it's it's ineffective. You know, it's, it's not going to affect Bitcoin. Or do you have other thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the YouTube comments or on Twitter as well, uh, at crypto underscore Bobby. And I'll put a link to Birch, uh, his Twitter handle in the YouTube description too. If you don't follow him, I would highly recommend you do so as well. Outside of that, guys, I am keeping my eye on what's happening right now with just the tether situation, um, with just kind of what's happening across the markets. We'll definitely provide any updates as I see fit. But looking forward to hearing from you folks in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play as well. Make sure to leave a rating and a review. Thank you so much for your time. Crypto Bobby signing up. Hope you have a good one. Peace.